Master, fellow aldermen, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm delighted to welcome you to Mansion House this evening of all evenings for an event I have long been looking forward to, the third Wax Chandler Sustainability Lecture. It's a forward-looking series taking concerns about the environment to an altogether new level. And it's about people, planet, and profit, but it's about integrating that to create long-term value. And it was on the back of their inspiration, um, together with tomorrow's company and its inspiring leader, Tony Mannering, who is at the back of the room, um, and Simon Mills, the head of sustainable development in the City Corporation, that I had the courage uh, to stand up uh, and be counted on this agenda uh, with the Tomorrow City lecture series. Um, well, it's more of an event, um, perhaps, uh, with a collaborative um, approach to a, an important agenda, which is a fantastic opportunity and series of opportunities for the City of London. The Wax Chandlers represent an excellent example of the thought leadership and commitment to productive debate in which livery companies excel. And in this instance, brought together not only by the Wax Chandlers and the City of London Corporation um, itself, um, but also to, of course, the very generous sponsor that the Master has mentioned, Development Securities. Um, who have an excellent track record in revitalizing, revitalizing and renewing cities. In fact, I do think that, to use the strap line of my year, you all in this room have the energy to transform lives. Now, it's about four years, I think, since I first heard and met Peter Head when he spoke in this very hall and it was one of those light bulb moments when somebody crystallizes your own concerns, your own thoughts, and plots a way forward far ever than you could have begun to in your own mind. And what was in my mind was a comparison. It was that in 1991, my firm was instructed to work on the new airport for Hong Kong and at the same time to begin the planning process to build Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Hong Kong opened its new airport in 1998. No decision was taken on Terminal 5 until 2002, even though the planning inquiry had probably finished about four years beforehand. And it did not open until 2008. And that was just a single terminal, for heaven's sake. I dread to think when we might actually achieve on that sort of history uh, a new whole airport, or for that matter, just another runway. The UK has massive experience and expertise in delivering all aspects of infrastructure, but I've long felt that what was holding us back was our inability to think long-term and are dithering at the preparatory stage of projects. It's a weakness we don't seem to get them to the shovel-ready stage because of what? Our labyrinthine planning process, or is it something else? And we hesitate, I suspect, because we're not certain that a project is the right project. It's not in the right place at the right time, and whether there are any other projects that will impact on it and will it deliver what we need for the long term? And that's without thinking about even the environmental and community impacts. Now, Peter has invited us to think about infrastructure in a different way and in a different way that will help us here in the UK to overcome the challenges we face in delivering the infrastructure we urgently need. But funnily enough, it of course has much wider application all around the world. 
and he invites us to take one step back and think about what we're trying to achieve and how we're trying to create an optimal solution for people, planet, and profit. And this is a huge contribution to creating a healthier, more responsible capitalism, as was the conference on inclusive capitalism we held here last week with fantastic contributions from Bill Clinton and Christine Lagarde and Mark Carney and my absolute hero, Paul Polman of Unilever. So I've studied Peter's thinking and his developing vision avidly ever since I met him. And he's become a big hero of mine. And I should also make a humble confession. For those with a mind to study my speeches as Lord Mayor, they'll quickly recognize how much I owe Peter and how much of his thinking I have stolen, stolen from him on a whole, absolutely wholesale. Um, in my defense, all I can say is that imitation in this instance is very much the most sincere form of flattery. His thinking and his words have underpinned much of what I've said over the last few months, and especially in our discussions in the Tomorrow City program, especially in how we need to embed the mainstream notions of value that integrate environmental, social, as well as economic factors. He has inspired me, he has inspired so many, and I am sure he will inspire us today. Peter, thank you. <laughs>